Warning, the content on this podcast is both highly adult and potentially enlightening. Please do not listen if you're not, I don't know, emotionally 25, physically 18. Thank you. Welcome to episode five of Orgy Story. I'm Kevin. We're a narrative-based podcast about hosting, attending, and destigmatizing orgies. Episode 5 is really the climax <clears throat> of our orgy adventure. It started out as a small quest to learn more about them and grew to a passion to throw our own, and you get to hear about it today. As always, we want to hear from you on Instagram, Orgy Story, orgystorycast at gmail.com, and tune into the first commercial. You can find out where we might be doing some things live in the coming weeks. On a personal note, The Orgy Story cast was at a party this weekend, the platonic kind. And of course, the best costume, baddest ass, smartest ladies at the party, there was a group of them were like, hey, by the way, we love Orgy Story. And I got nervous. I started blushing. It takes a lot to make me blush. But there was no judgment. Just that they liked it. Acknowledged a little entertainment value. Which means this show is working. Thank you so much for listening to Orgy Story. Tagline for this orgy, when Whoa. Mother Nature takes over. We hosted a podcast around this moment, 8.15 p.m. on May 4th, 2019, on a weather-perfect evening. We hosted an orgy. We do this out of love. Strange weird love it's not a mission just about the carnal while fun not our sole motivation to provide a somewhat flawed but visible path work to the common household orgy (laughs) friends have told us we're insane we don't disagree and yet still we choose to host an orgy anything could go wrong we naively think everything will go right but we've done our research we have tequila and fun is about to be had this is the first discussion point where I get to bring in lovely fellow storytellers. Mm. Beyonce, VK, <laughs> BF, um. HT. Hi. <laughs> Just for H down. Like <laughs> yeah, you really embellished there. <laughs> the set had come to life the day before. We all got together, did the cleaning, the lighting, supplies, play spaces, and had a music discussion. And we yeah. spent quite a long time discussing mattress and couch placement. You wouldn't really think that you would want to rearrange your household until you host an orgy. And then it's all of a sudden like... How can we yeah. maximize surfaces here? And to also, to our somewhat credit, that we had moved into this place a week prior to our orgy. Right. So it was all, you know, kind of... Modular, though. In some, like, it was both hectic and we had to get a lot of shit done. But we also could move shit anywhere. So yeah. to me, there's like so the that other part, yeah. part of it's like... So we put easy. the couches wherever the hell we want. We could put the mat, the extra mattress wherever we wanted. We ultimately had two play spaces. We cleaned every surface of this place multiple times. Lots Um, of laundry. That part's tough. So I have a question. I've never asked you guys how you ended up. I surprisingly wasn't part of this decision making. How did you guys choose what alcohol to get? Well, funny thing, too, Kevin mentioned we have tequila. So he spent a buttload of money on tequila and then decided to buy yeah, the cheapest versions of boxed wine you could have. So it was a I I left him in charge of the alcohol. I don't know what I was thinking. I did fine. He did fine. He did great. I got a lot of alcohol. (laughs) I got some tequila. I got several gallons of wine. (laughs) We had Scrupulated over the lighting, we boarded our two mutts for the actual event. We had everything ready, and the music is still, to me, I have been to multiple orgies. There is no more contentious point than the playlist. I wouldn't know. (laughs) Well, you were in charge of this playlist. (laughs) The criticism of this playlist aside, which, you know what? But I would like to point out that it's not always the criticism that is the solicited reaction. So, And more specifically, 
a lot of people care way more than I do about what the playlist has on. Because I was like, yeah, I wasn't people paying attention were paying to it way at all. more attention to what was playing music wise. This has happened at other on. orgies, though. Also, we've noticed people are like, "What's going on with the playlist?" It's like it turns out people are just bitchy about music, regardless. And the yeah. internet has enabled people to be able to listen to whatever they want. That's turns great. Turns out people's music tastes are subjective, and what I like might not be what another person chooses to listen to while they have sex, and that's fine. But thirty years ago, you were fucked because you could only listen to like so many records. Now you have right. Spotify. Right. <laughs> so I feel like people are right. way more. It's like the limitless possibilities is honestly problematic. <laughs> and I have too welcome much to, to our from. one gripe about hosting orgies. <laughs> we're, we're all like, the, God, the fucking playlist takes forever. And the playlist takes forever and nobody says It's so political. <laughs> there should be a governing body. Much like a season has been declared. Potentially that's next. But we also set up like a smoking section outside, a Colorado smoking, smoking section upstairs. We yep. had separate play areas. We had a spot where people could just chill. It's a, it's a, it's a loft townhouse, so not a ton of space. This but space is so cool. It's pretty awesome. And if you wanted to chill, there was you know the kitchen area, and we put a lot of thought into yeah. giving people a, a place to do whatever they needed to do because that's what you have to do when you're hosting. And this upstairs play space, well. It was a play space, but it was also the Colorado smoking area. And this play space up here, I just loved this loft. Mm -hmm. But it was like the catalyst for so many fun I, fun moments of my night. We're going to get to it. Yeah, we're going to get to it. But I'm on the list. <laughs> Plot twist. We'll get yeah, to that. Yeah, you can also <laughs> see everything that was going down on the mattress below right. from the upstairs playlist going or play down. space. Which is, yeah. Who is coming? And where did the guest list come from? People ask us this all the time. This is a discussion point. I will start out with the core. There were seven of us. Two of Hannah's friends. Only one made it. But he had a dick big enough for any other people that might not have made it. <laughs> and we will be <laughs> referring up. to him as Tall Big Dick from now on. Yeah. yeah. Very tall. Bit giant dick. Very nice Just dick. <laughs> giant, if you will. And a fivesome group from the north which is my Game of Thrones-ish way of saying from a different place. They were actually from the South, if we're being super uh, I was going to say, I've never watched <laughs> Game of Thrones. Yeah, Vicky and I are in the same boat there. They were part of, so the guest list was composed of an invite, a few friends type of system, and we had our, our two friends that we utilized to help us build a little bit more of the guest list, and that's how we got it together. It's 8 p.m., and this is when the guests start to arrive. Moments before, tensions are high in the house. Let's say that again, because I misspoke tensions. Tensions, high at the house. All the prep work is done. We waited for our guests after podcasting about it. Discussion point, pre-orgy nerves. People have got to hear us in our most uncandid, most less experienced pre-orgy convo, but... Briefly summarize, I was super nervous. I know you all were also super nervous. The best way to describe it is that I had butterflies for two hours. Yeah, it was a very interesting nervous energy because it was it was excitement. It was nerves. It was worrying that people were going to bring people that I wasn't into or it was just... There was some unknown to this orgy. There was orgy. a lot of unknown to this orgy. Yeah. As particularly with people coming that we had never met before. That's not always the orgy invite uh, scenario. Some Usually, in a lot of orgies that we've been to, that we know everybody. Or some things that we tend to host, we only invite people that we've met before. And this wasn't the case. Or to our last orgy, where we knew nobody, right. was very different than where we knew some people. But some people were bringing five people that we didn't know. And, you know, it was, it was a lot of... It was exciting and nerve-wracking. Group dynamics is sort of what we're articulating 8.15 p.m. The five some arrives from the north slash south, as we've clearly established... I was monitoring the two entrances of our somewhat gated community loft and spotted five people. They were unsuccessfully trying to input a number into a box, and I spotted the tight latex dress on one and the see-through shirt on the other. I went towards them and shouted, Looking for an orgy? Which is pretty uh, daredevilish of you, Kevin, because you live in a community with many other folks. <laughs> yeah, and frankly, it would not be uncharacteristic for them all to look at me like, no? No. What? 
It's like younger kind of hipster Darren. crowd too. Is Darren available? <laughs> They luckily were looking for the orgy. They were, and just behind them, two friends and frequent play partners, the nymphs. And I'm also going to throw in some things here. TBD arrives, which we've all, it's not to be determined, not on this podcast. That stands for Tall Big Dick. Hannah's friend, play partner. I. This is my own typing. Vicky swoons. Hannah has good taste. Vicky, would you like to give some foreshadowing? How was the connection? Go. It was a great connection. I was nervous. Sometimes, sometimes I get nervous about Hannah's tasting guys. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that. I don't care to. I don't care con- to continue. I said sometimes. <laughs> this is amazing. Do you guys want to talk about Ryan? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say our case was always great. We don't have 100% track record. No one's, no one's in a glass house here. No. I'm first to <laughs> receive stones in my glass house. <laughs> You're first to receive them? Okay, Love so it. Vicky, go yeah, on. What were Vicky, you about Go on to tell us about what lovely taste I have. <laughs> This time it was perfect. It was great. <laughs> so it's like it, tall, lanky, kind of awkward, just by type. But he has a great smile, don't you think? It, it, yeah. Lovely human being, also great sense of humor. I and yeah. I also, I mean, it's very as sweet, as I, like very. You know. I hit it off with him too. It was like this guy rocks. Right. Really dug him. If only he would suck your dick. <laughs> yeah. Could you, I'm blushing. Now. He I'm would trying not. to get back to he the is, He's he's not there, unfortunately. Well, we're 50% there without getting too <laughs> far. We the, will get there. The flirting was above average for this type of situation. I honestly mean that. It was a good indicator the night might go well because you don't know until you get the group together. A group of 13 strangers sort of seamlessly appeared to be finding new connections and interests. The fivesome was, uh, they seemed engaged, nervous, curious. All the things you kind of expect from people who be a little less experienced as the rest of us sort of bonded and flirted. While the veterans were lost in very thoughtful conversation, the next portion of this story, ow, <laughs> is going to take some turns. Kevin just gave himself a excruciating small pain. paper guy <laughs> bleeding paper violently cut. on the floor. <laughs> I'm trying to read his script. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> it's an orgy story commercial for the Sexual Health Alliance. Head over to sexualhealthalliance.com. You can find the event tag in the description of this episode, but they have monogamish. Advanced skills for open relationships with Dr. Elizabeth Sheff and Dr. David Lay. You do not want to miss it. Plus, we might be there. Monogamish. Because it's playtime orgy story. The first scene began with Devin, Brittany, and myself. That's how I got naked. They are a couple of a long time. Devin fucked a first orgasm out of her quickly. While she sucked my cock and moaned into it like a microphone. Sorry to get pornographic. That's so hot. It was so hot. hot. It was hot. And I will just say that at this point in time, I was still in the kitchen flirting and getting to know our guests. And (laughs) I put so much pressure in my head about like, who's going to be the first to get naked? How is it going to, how is it going to happen? And I just looked over and saw the three of you fucking. And I was like, it's begun. I was pretty naked. I was extremely naked but i also have a vivid memory of seeing victoria not walk but run up the stairs run of our loft <laughs> oh her butt lo- probably looked so good it did i, I, I was looking for <laughs> where the hell check. jack and Paige had gone it's like I, they're <laughs> part of the they OG were, orgy crew they were upstairs colorado smoking style obviously <laughs> <They> <laughs> were, where are they always <laughs> so by the way. i go and upstairs I, I was also yeah. up there <laughs> you, I go upstairs, you join up too, and everyone's still in their clothes, and I'm hearing and seeing over our like little loft balcony people fucking and being naked downstairs. It's like, okay, well, let's just, let's start a no pants party upstairs. Let's, let's and get this thing you rolling. Were, you were already in your underwear, and I think that is what prompted me to both come upstairs and then 
make sure that everybody had their clothes off. Yeah. And it was you, me, and Jack and Paige, and um, I think there was some really awesome music playing in the background. Yeah, we and had we a were good little just, moment of the four yeah, of us and just kind of. I remember thinking to myself, like, this is a significant moment of the night. I'm with three people I love and who are so sexy, and we're all just getting naked and dancing with each other. Yeah. Shout out to your playlist, by the way. Thank you. It was Early a great. Shout out. See, yeah. I'm, I actually remember you all up there because you were watching the three of us, and it was everything I wanted out of our loft. It was everything. <laughs> I had never been as happy. Brittany finished a climax and departed. Hannah immediately, just instantly between the guys. Like, we didn't miss a beat. She left. You were like, hi, <laughs> Hannah here. I will suck your dick. I am ready. What? We piled up immediately with a bi curious guy where Hannah and I happened to be two of the most dangerous sharks in the ocean. Uh, discussion point. And I put, right, I want to read what I wrote. Bisexual, poly, whatever you might be, Hannah and I will suck your dick and provide you one. It's part of a separate podcast project called Bi Try. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> We're still in discussions with Showtime, so everybody stay tuned. Listen, if you are bi and you want to fuck me, I'm down. That guy expressed <laughs> it to you. He said, hey, can I get a little bit involved here? And you and I were like, yep. <laughs> Say no more. Hugged him. Yeah, uh, I had a great time. Are we, we're referring to the single bi guy here. Yeah, this is, was, he was he part was, of the fivesome. He He's part a, of the fivesome we've re referenced, but he was different than the fivesome he was the single guy. He was the single guy. He was Everyone such a else star was in a of the show. Yeah. He was really a star of the show. I remember trying some new sexual positions with him that night. It was so fun. But also just, yeah, Kevin and I were really very welcoming, you would say. Yes, I love that. We're very welcoming. <laughs> and I'm actually going to reach right into what I wrote here as we're hooking up with him. That would be Hannah and I. Jack Page and Devin join us. One of the five some couples established a nerdy historical reference. Sooner like territory, Graham on the couch that they would hold on to for many hours. Just above them, above is accurate, on the rim of the couch are my dear fiance and TBD. Which, TBD. as we've seen, sounds for tall, big dick. Well, I had a moment where I was like, I don't remember this at all. And then I realized it was just because, you know, I was getting eaten out on top of the couch. But of... let's. But... This was happening in <laughs> slow motion because newcomer who's lost in a romantic making out. Because when I first looked at you two, you were just making out. Same. Fully and that's what I was just about to say is when I looked over at you guys. I was so captivated by just how intensely you were kissing each other. Like it lasted for a while and I was like, they are feeling each other and I'm into watching. <laughs> then he starts. So I know how Hannah got naked. I helped be a part of that. You and TBD yeah. start he, taking like, each other's clothes up. off. Yeah. Yep. He picked me up and like put me on the side of the couch and sorry to the takeover sooner uh, corner. <laughs> He just started going just, down on you. Yeah, and I was it like, was amazing. Don't mind me. I'm just gonna. <laughs> it was an. Eat. It was an excellent show. It yeah. was. It was. This actually, this moment in the whole play party, as Vicky's on the rise moaning, this is a pinnacle play moment at the party. It would. It would last for almost another hour and forty five minutes, taking multiple reiterations, as the bodies in the center mattress, pleasing one another. The seven eighths of us just take turns pleasing different variations of one another. Vicky is riding someone and taking another friend with her mouth. Hannah is lost in a new bi curious stranger and Jack. Paige and I are hooking up on Devin, and our dream of a successful orgy is technically accomplished. Discussion point How do you two feel first playtime when? I feel like I just grazed through an hour and a half of very visceral sex. Yeah, there was so when I was thinking back, a lot of it is a blur because the first playtime was great, but you know, sometimes it just gets a little blurry. Well, you don't necessarily when you're in the middle of playtime think, fuck, I need to remember this for the podcast. Like yeah, we don't yeah. all have a journal to write things down. <laughs> as Some of us know. do. Um, okay, we'll get to that later. <laughs> but I do remember at one point, uh 
Devin just out of the blue just decided to fuck me put a cop like it, and then it was just a fun moment where I was like huh I wonder which one of my friends is fucking me right now and I turned around and it was Devin and I was sucking somebody else and it was just like a fun group consensual activity my of- f- my favorite moment was when I was on my back and this was one of the like rare moments where I let myself be completely dominated by more than one person because I think I'm too bossy to let that happen a lot of the time. But I was on my back and I had Kevin, Devin, Jack, Paige, Vicky all around me and everybody was just touching me. And it was so incredible. It was like, It was kind of like a wake up moment of like, I'm here and I have all of these. I'm so lucky to have all of these people touching me in ways I want to be touched. Yeah, it was so pleasurable to have something going on with you and then look over and there's stuff going on with every, you know, it's all in one mattress at one point. And there were seven of us just having a really good time. And you could just kind of reach your hand out and touch somebody. And it was somebody you knew and trusted and. And that's another great point about orgies is that you not only have a lot of things happening to you that are pleasurable, but you can always usually look across the room and see something happening that is pleasurable. And that alone turns you on. So you have so many different things yeah. turning you on. Even when you take a break, it's fun to just. <laughs> right. like- even when you're taking a break and you're like, even I'm tapped out for the night, you're still turned on by what's going on around yeah. you. Doesn't get boring. The fun we've had at this point is mostly with our familiar crew. The new fivesome comprised of two couples and the bicurious stranger Anna and I had taken under the sea. Both couples had chosen to keep to themselves and stay in a single space or on a single space. This division would continue for the evening, but playtime is far from over. It's an orgy story commercial for Orgy Story. Tell a friend. Five stars on iTunes. Even if you listen on Stitcher, just head on over to Apple and be like, here's your five stars. Subscribe on Spotify. We love you from all around the globe. Second playtime is defined by the greatest thing I've ever seen. But started with, Hannah needs some space. (laughs) You all may remember the tagline for this orgy. It's called, When Mother Nature Takes Over. Fine, I'll be honest about it. I was getting my period the next day. We had such a trooper. We had cut it pretty close on this one. We knew that. We knew that. Full disclosure, um, some fun information about your three orgy hosts orgy story hosts i have i do track my my uh monthly (laughs) flow on (laughs) kevin and vicky's (laughs) monthly calendar it's so (laughs) a code we've had to refine over the months (laughs) we originally started like describing it as so obscurely that none of us knew what we were talking about just like none of us one of the three of us i remembered exactly what happened symbols targets and not target period i was like i was like that's the one that's the target period you were like what i I thought that was the target date for when we wanted to record i was like that's not how i remember it we have too many (laughs) dates okay we have too many dates among the three of us too many things that we're all doing together We could be recording. We could be going on a date. We could be getting drinks. We could be having an orgy. We could be anticipating my period. We're much more literal now on the calendar. (laughs) H-Town period. (laughs) Okay. So point being, I was getting my period the next day and it was only made clear to me that this was impacting my night a couple days later when I recapped with Kevin and Vicky. Because apparently, I, story, apparently, I, <laughs> apparently, I was quite moody. <laughs> okay, we want to we want to share with an inter- we want to share with the audience an interaction yeah. that Vicky and I had with you and TBD, whom everyone knows at this point. You brought, um, and this is really one of my favorite moments. TBD, Vicky, and myself, excluding you, had been outside. And this was excluding. This was May, <laughs> and it was still snowing 
very seriously in Denver, Colorado. Mm. And we said, if it snows one more time, we're moving, I guess. They were making a funny joke. We were making a joke. An we innocuous, said, funny joke. We said, I don't know, Albuquerque? Which we're obviously not moving to Albuquerque. Sorry to Albuquerque, but no. And if we just made a few jokes a few minutes later. I don't know, 20, 30. We're talking to Hannah and... But- TVD it comes up organically. Call back. TVD's like, well, yeah, if it snows, you two are moving. And Hannah looks at us like we had genuinely just screamed visceral things at her. Okay, call me crazy. I value your you two in my life. And I was scared that you were going to move. All right, continue the story. Yeah, so he nearly shits himself because he made the joke and you... Almost punched him through the ceiling, which would have put a damper on the orgy. Excuse me, violence is never the answer. I You're would, right. I would never do such a thing. You looked at him like you were going to punch him through the ceiling. <laughs> and then just he, went, what? And he <laughs> shrunk down like, oh my and God. And tried to explain it. And he he went six five. step by step what happened. He said every part of the joke. Every he was like, the joke. no, no, no. They were joking that they were going to move if it snows. It's supposed to snow. So I was just making a joke. You're going to have to move. And you were like. And Hannah makes direct eye contact with him. And, and, in and a let's, serious let's like tone. two to three seconds fall off the clock. She's like pure silence. Well, I guess I'm just not part of the joke then. And then turns around and leaves. On my heel. While he's like screaming. But I just explained but the I just joke. Explained the joke. I just explained the joke. And he looks at us <laughs> in like sheer terror. But I thought I, I thought I explained the joke. <laughs> and you were fine with us. You just gave him the look like you're the dumbest motherfucker on this goddamn planet. So well, this... I guess I'm just not going to be part of the joke then. <laughs> so and this him screaming. That was the whole joke. That this... was the joke. This was a combination of alcohol and. Ant flow, okay. <laughs> it, it well, was... you weren't mad at anybody else. No, I'm gonna in say, fact, <laughs> in fact, I, I would not recall. You the, were I would not recall the story. The two of us. I would not recall <laughs> the story or the joke. <laughs> you Later, had... she would hear it and be like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? I'm totally sober all the time, and I retain all of my memories. I will say, I did not also realize as the party started to evolve, the upstairs space had become sort of an escape, and this is where we start to have. Um, I happily walked upstairs to the loft after a little bit of time had passed and found Hannah, Vicky, and Paige all in bed together. Have I died? I wasn't sure. (laughs) Completely blissful and sexy, flirting, you three in bed, looking at the mirror. However... You two, how did you all get upstairs? Give me a little bit of that backstory. Beats me. (laughs) I don't know. I just remember looking for Hannah and Paige, and I remember going upstairs, and then there they were in the bed, and so I went and joined them, and then we have a mirror just above our bed, and we were just kind of all examining ourselves in the mirror above our bed. Yeah, so listen up, everybody. This mirror above their bed is so great. It's really an excellent sex tool because it is a full length mirror and Kevin and Vicky have lofts like um, pillars of wood above their bed that they can rafters. Ha- yeah. Rafters, if you will. And you, and they can put this mirror in their rafters so that when you lay in bed and you face up, you can see yourself in the mirror. And I was just so, I let myself be so in awe of how sexy we looked the three of us did look pretty good in that mirror yeah and like i don't even remember at this point i think i might have been at this point done with my sexual activity for the night and i was still just having so much fun looking up at our three sexy selves in this mirror the best part was i feel like we were intimidating to a lot of people because a couple of guys came up to do the you know colorado smoking Mm -hmm. and then looked over and were like oh sorry and then went back downstairs. <laughs> and we were like, yeah, fuck yeah, off. Fuck off. <laughs> I actually walked up at one point. They handed me a vibrator. They were like, it's too strong for Hannah. I was like, I didn't know that existed. <laughs> I, was so, I was like, I didn't realize there was a speed too aggressive. I do want to hit on some things that happened in this, fluctu- this fluctuation. Because 
I had come upstairs because I had a briefly weird experience downstairs with two of the two of the parts of the five some couples, the the two couples. I had asked to join. They said yes. I obviously you want verbal consent before you ask to join any play session. They were kind of playing on one of the couches, and I was like, "Can I join in and and rub and help?" And I got a clear yes, and then I touched, and the touch felt like a clear no. Mm. And if anything feels like a clear no, I I withdraw. That's me. I'm out. So I I did purposefully withdraw. I came upstairs, and that's when I came upstairs to this blissful happiness, which was amazing. Shortly after, Jack would also arrive. Now, Jack had done two things. One, he had expressed something similar to what I felt. He had asked to join part of one of the two couples and felt like he was invited and then kind of rejected. He had also sucked TBD's dick. So he had been doing a lot while he was downstairs. Can I tell this story, please? This was a really important moment to me throughout the night because I had two great sexy friends of mine, Jack, who often in orgy situations or group sex situations involve, ends up playing the role of a sex fairy. And that's just what we've ended up deeming as the most appropriate term for him because he so genuinely cares about everybody else's sexual needs and desires that often i mean it almost becomes it almost is a sexual need of his to be able to fulfill the sexual needs of others and he came up to visit with vicky and Paige and i when we were in the loft and told us the story of how he had approached my tall big dick friend who he had surmised had heteroflexible tendencies. It's quite obvious. <laughs> the way he makes love. And he had said, I, I, I don't exactly recall the verbiage that they used, but it's probably a look. Right. It might have been a look across the room, but it also might have been something along the lines of like the, the privilege of being a male. The some might have been something along the lines of like, you know, what I don't even know. They, but, but it happened. It happened. And and Jack ended up asking our tall, big dick friend if he would like his dick to be sucked by a man. And this was our friend, tall, big dicks, TBD. It was his first time ever having intercourse with a man or not even just being around a man, but having direct intercourse with a man. And I knew that it was something that he craved. And so hearing this story was just satisfying to me on so many levels. And it was so hot to hear that our friend Jack had provided this need for our tall big dick friend and I, i'm i i know that he enjoyed it i know that they both enjoyed it and it was so incredible to hear that that had happened at our party <laughs> it's now close to 11 30 p.m this was the beginning of the division of the evening the party had divided into two communities a party of two people who had played prior and two new couples the five would remain downstairs playing. I went back down just in time for one of the guys of the relationship to thank me for a nice evening. He was going to leave his group behind and depart. Sensing it might have been performance related, I did take that moment to give him a TED talk about erections, a topic we've covered <laughs> enthusiastically in season one of Morgie's Story. <laughs> He chose to say he chose to stay, excuse me, which which I'm I'm thankful for. Just as he and I finished the discussion, people return from upstairs and Hannah makes a departure. Hannah clothed leaves aggressively at eleven thirty PM. I'm sorry. I mean... No, 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 no. No, and uh, uh, that was kind of like an instinctual apology. I don't feel like it's something I need to apologize for, but... Mother Nature really did take over here. I knew I was getting my period the next day. I had had my sexual fun. And something, some hormone within me told me I was done. Fight or flight. <laughs> Hannah leaves. 
TBD leaves out of fear. <laughs> let's so, all let's remind everybody. Is that Hannah you, okay? Is Hannah okay? Okay, well I'm just gonna scared. go. He's like, I better get the fuck out of here. Let's yeah. Yeah. let's remind everybody two things: one, that he was my sexual partner prior to this inv- invite invitation, and two, that I had previously made him feel most likely humiliated and small <laughs> when I said my line, quote, I guess I'm just not part of the joke, end quote, and walked away on my heel. He just had a look of sheer terror <laughs> as you left. Well, I guess I got to go too. Okay. I don't think he well. took it that personally. I think it was just like, I better get the fuck out of here before the group turns on me. <laughs> he just has a funny fight or flight instinct. We love him. He'll be back in our lives soon. Devin and Brittany leave. The fivesome departs almost second. I mean, within 10 minutes. Well, yeah. Everybody everybody starts to depart except Jack and Paige. Anything can test your relationship at any time. An orgy ending abruptly at just past midnight is one of them. Fortunately for us, our good friends stayed after to make sure that didn't happen. We had a riotous post weird venting session that included some b-roll from the production practice of this episode we're not going to play it for you is ultimately what i'm telling you how do you know who your good friends are typically the ones helping you clean up after the orgy and prepared to double team you like sex demons as soon as the recycling is done sex fairies sex fairy friends nymphs this is a weird orgy as the night developed what seemed like promising flirtation amongst the new members of the group and the frequent orgiers had evolved or devolved into a very semi-unclear division between multiple people. And the rest of it was basically a party. This is a first lesson learned. We had new members, maybe hadn't communicated quite what they were comfortable with. We had a group of experienced people that led to a TED Talk about erection issues and an overall unbelievable house party. If you look at it in terms of the house, through the house party lens, we had an unbelievable house party. And otherwise, we're not like afraid to tell you it was not a great orgy. Or it wasn't our favorite. Certainly wasn't in our top fives as we've ranked our recent sluttiness top fives. But considering that it was the first one that the three of us hosted here in this place and hosted, period, at all, it went well. And it's a homegrown thing. We don't have a lot of infrastructure. There's certainly places that have it. You should seek that out. You should be a part of it. We were purposefully trying to do something, which is very simple. Throw a common household orgy. <laughs> common household orgy. I love how we've coined that term. <laughs> We're going to sell it. <laughs> no worry. Madison Avenue's ready. I feel great about what we did. I feel great about the final product. Not my favorite orgy. I think we learned a lot. You know, um, I think one of the big things that we learned is when you're hosting an orgy in a situation that makes you feel vulnerable, invite people that you know and love and trust. There were some people that came that we had never met before, and I think that threw us for a loop. Um, they ended up bringing a dynamic to the group that we didn't anticipate. And um, when you're hosting an orgy, I think it's uh, important to be able to be around a lot of people that you know and trust. It's also okay that it doesn't go well. Right. It doesn't always. Right. Sometimes it goes great. There were moments that were great, but it doesn't always go And well. obviously we just spent the last like couple episodes telling you about how much fun we had at this orgy like we had fun we fun was had we loved it we loved it watching her sprint up the stairs pantsless screaming you know what take your pants off it was great you guys great it is a privilege that we were able to host an orgy and it still wasn't the best orgy we've had right (laughs) like we we have a, a lot of experience here and it is really truly a privilege that we have so m- a wealth of knowledge here to draw lo- draw on and that we learned a lot of important lessons here and we can host a better one next time. You've been listening to season one of Orgy Story. You've now heard a five-part podcast on a journey to attending and hosting your own orgy. It takes work. Certainly inspires 
better exercise habits, I will say that. We are going to work very hard to bring you more bonus content. We have opinions about Are You The One Season 8. I want to do an Eyes Wide Shut movie orgy story podcast conglomeration because I have opinions. Maybe we could just talk about the HBO series Real Sex or Oz. I I don't know. But more coming on this feed. You need to let us know what you thought of the five episodes and where you want to hear us go next. Orgy Story on Instagram. OrgyStoryCast at gmail.com We will keep talking about orgies.